Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In the last episode, we created a comp from the takes that were performed by our drummer, Edward Melton. Since then, I've edited the drums to tighten up the performance just a bit. To learn more about improving drum performances in your own projects, check out my drum editing and Reaper course on ProMix Academy. I'll leave a link in the description. Now that I've got my project set up with markers and regions, scratch guitars tracked, and drums recorded and edited, I'd like to send this project to Adam from Hi YouTube I'm Dad for bass tracking. In this episode, I'll show you how to package a project to send to another Reaper user. It's a lot of P's. Package a project for preparations. Peter Piper Peppers something. Let's take a look. As I said previously, I've edited the drums in this project to help tighten up the performance a bit. I've also added scratch bass tracks to act as a guide for Adam. Needless to say, he can play however he'd like to for the song, but I do find it helpful sometimes to send a bit of a guide track just to show some ideas that I had that I thought may sound good in the song. Let's take a listen and see what we've got so far. That's sounding pretty good so far for a rough static mix. Something to consider when sending a project to another user is the plugins that are used in the project. If I were to send this project as is, I would need to make sure that Adam has all the same plugins that I'm using. As we look at the individual tracks, we can see a handful of plugins used. Another method that may be a little bit easier for you to see everything at a glance is the Project Media and Effects Bay. Click on View and Project Media Effects Bay. In this dialog, I can see the names of each of the plugins used and how many instances are used. If we start from the top, I've got a couple of JS plugins, Event Horizon and Saturation, both of which are included with Reaper. Next, I've got a couple of plugins from Analog Obsession, Lala and Tuba. I've already checked with Adam and I've ensured that he has these two plugins. Up next, I've got four instances of Black Sun from Audio Assault. That plugin was used for the guitar scratch tracks. Up next is Clank, also from Audio Assault, and I use that for my bass tone. And finally, we can see that we've got three instances of Rea Comp, one instance of Rea EQ, three instances of Rea Gate on my toms, and one instance of Rea Limit on the Premaster. Each of these four plugins come with Reaper, so there's no concern there. I do want to make sure that when Adam gets the project, he's able to hear the guitars as if they were recorded through a live amp. I'm not so concerned about him hearing a proper bass tone, so I won't worry too much about that. So at this point, I'll close my project bay, and let's take a look at my guitar tracks. Again, looking at the effect slots on the guitars, we can see that each of these four tracks uses Black Sun, and I know that Adam doesn't have that plug-in. I'll left-click my first guitar track to highlight it, and then hold Shift and left-click the final guitar track to select each of those. Now I'll right-click any of the tracks, and go to Render Freeze Tracks. We've got a few different options to look at here, with the base level options being a choice between rendering or freezing. The obvious choice would seem to be to render these tracks to make sure that Adam hears them just as I hear them now. The problem that I have with rendering the tracks is that the render is done post-fader and post-pan. I'd like the option for him to still be able to manipulate the volume and the panning of the tracks if he'd like. So let's take a look at the lower options to freeze. Each of these tracks is mono, so I'd like to choose the first freeze option, which is freeze tracks to mono, render pre-fader, save and remove items and online effects. So with that highlighted, I'll left click, and we'll wait for this dialog to finish. Now that that's completed, if we take a look at tracks 3 through 6, you'll notice that there's no longer any effects here. Looking up at the Arrange view, we can see that there's a lock icon on each of the media items. Let's play back the song and see what's happening here.
As you could hear, the song sounds exactly as it did before. Let's take a look at the Project Media Effects Bay and see if anything's changed there. I'll click on View and Project Media Effects Bay, and you'll notice we no longer have the four instances of Black Sun listed here. If we take a look at the top of the Project Bay dialog, you'll notice there's several tabs. We've got Automation Items, Take Comps, Item Groups, Effects Parameters, Effects that we're currently looking at, Source Media, and this one that's directly to the left of Effects called Media Items. If we take a look at this, we can see all of the media items that are in the project. Looking at our columns here, we can see the track, if I extend this a little bit, and here we can see the tracks that I'm currently using for my guitar, but if you'll notice under the Active Take Details, it shows the source, and these file names have the word Freeze listed. Try that again. So what Reaper has done is rendered a copy of the affected media item and put that in place of the original source. If we close the project bay, and let's just take a look at our first track here, Guitar Left. I'll right-click that, and when I go to the Render and Freeze Tracks menu, you'll notice a new option that we didn't have before that says Unfreeze Tracks, Restore Previous Items and Effects. Let's give that a try. Now you can see we no longer have the lock on the media items, and if I take a look at the effects slots, we still have Black Sun with all the same settings that it had before. Let's take a listen, just spot check and make sure everything still sounds as it should. And that's sounding identical to it the way it was before. I'll right click this track once again, go to Render Freeze Tracks, and let's refreeze that back to mono. Just for the sake of argument, let's go ahead and do the same with the bass track. I'll scroll down to my bass track, right click, and go to Render, Freeze Tracks, Freeze Tracks to Mono, Render, Prefader, Save, Remove Items, and Online Effects. From our previous testing, it's pretty safe to say that this will sound exactly the same as it did before, but I find it helpful to spot check just to be sure. And that's sounding pretty good to me. At this point, my project is in good shape. There's no plugins remaining on here that Adam doesn't have, and I can safely send him this project. He'll be able to open it and listen to it with no problems whatsoever. And since we use the freeze option, when he sends the project back, I can simply unfreeze those tracks if I want to work with them again. Let's save the project. I'll go to File and Save Project, or you can press Control S. And now we need to package this for distribution. So I'll close Reaper, go to my Reaper Projects folder move it to the correct window. If you've been following along, hopefully you've already got your Reaper set up to where all of your projects are contained in their own subfolder. If you're not sure how to set that up, click the link above for more information. Now this particular project I did not sort the way that I normally like to do. The project name is sure Emerosa, and it's listed here. I can see that the file size on this is 686 megabytes, so what I'll do is right-click this folder, and I can choose to compress this to a zip file. And through the magic of video editing, that didn't take very long at all. If you're not familiar with zip files, essentially what this has done is created a single file that contains everything that he needs for the project. The file size is still too big to send by email. There's a lot of different options out there that you can use, like Google Drive or Dropbox, but I'd like to show you something that's fairly new to me called Wormhole. I'll open up my browser, pull it to the correct window, and go to wormhole.app. With Wormhole, you can send up to 10 gigabytes for free each time that you send something. One thing that's important to understand about Wormhole is whatever you upload here is only good for 24 hours. So if you do use this to send to someone, make sure that they understand that they have 24 hours to download the files. Let's get our folder pulled back up, and I'll drag my zip file into Wormhole. And at this point, I would simply copy the link and send that to Adam so he can download the file. I'll leave it up to him to show you how he downloads the file and opens the project. As you can see, sharing a project with another Reaper user is pretty easy to do. There's just a few considerations that you need to make about plugins that are used in the project. 
but the ability to freeze tracks allows you to share your project with no concern for what plugins the other user may or may not have. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon link below. Be sure to check out Adam's channel at Hi YouTube, I'm Dad. I'll leave a link in the description. We'll see you next time. Hey, it's John. Let's talk about Reaper Blog. To get your own Reaper Blog t-shirts, check the link in the description.